Yeah, awesome. And then I'm not sure who jumped on, but uh, let's figure it out. Okay. Hey, 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 welcome to training day three, day two. And we're going to do some cutting right now as we begin. Okay. So first of all, um, I'm going to start off. And what I'm going to do, everyone, is I'm going to walk you through the homemaker pieces uh, or the homemaker set, excuse me, piece by piece in the order, hopefully, that we would go in the presentation. I say hopefully because if I go out of order, I'll excuse myself from, I'm sorry if I do. Uh, and I say that because I might add some extra stuff. So it's going to be extra if I do add stuff, uh, but it's good for you to know. Okay. I'll need that trimmer back in a second. Okay. So now we'll tilt it down and I'm going to go through piece by piece. And what I would do if I were you is again, I would write notes again, I'll name the knife. I'll say some stuff. And then I'll skip to the next knife and say some stuff, okay? And then you can just kind of get stuff down that way, okay? And uh, just to make sure, uh, what's up, Zoom user? That's, I know that's, uh, I know who that is. Zoom user is Grace. Yes, Grace, okay? And, uh, okay, that's, all right, great. All right, so nothing that's urgent right here. Okay, you can check your phone on that one. Okay, great. So let's start off, okay? I'm gonna start with the pairing knife. First thing I want to mention about the paring knife, as you know from the manual, this is not a knife that you use in, uh, on the cutting board, because if I take a straight edge and I rub it on a cutting board, it's just going to dull, right? Straight edges are always going to dull, no matter how good the steel is, even though Cutco uses the top school steel for kitchen cutlery, and there are some other brands that use the top steel, straight edges are constantly going to be dulling. So this is the knife that's used in the what? Do you remember? The air, and we talked about that using the air. Pairing knives are so popular that we actually have six pairing knives. That's worth a note. You have, we have six pairing knives. People that have Cutco always like to add extra pairing knives, add extra pieces. So it's really fun for them. So we have, don't worry about writing these down. This is two and three quarter inch blade. That's the standard pairing knife for the homemaker. But we have two different four inch pairing knives with different shapes. We have a three inch pairing knife. We have a Santoku pairing knife and a bird beak pairing knife. Pairing, bird beak pairing knife is pretty cool too. So the pairing knife, again, you use it. And whenever you pull the knife towards yourself, you want to be safe. So the benefit of Cutco is that when you have a sharp knife, you actually don't have to pull hard. So that's why I can do this and it doesn't put my body parts in danger, okay? So when I pull through this, I have a sharp blade. And one of the benefits of having knives, sometimes people would even say, oh, it might be too sharp. I wanna make a point. Having sharp knives is like driving on good tires with good tread. Who's ever driven on bald tires? So this is an analogy worth a side, like a side note. Bald tires are super dangerous. Do bald tires function? They do, they function as tires, but you're dangerous if there's rain or snow or anything, right? So it's like driving on ball tires with dull knives because you're pushing and you're, you push too hard and you slice yourself, right? That's a ball tire. But when you have good tread on your tires, you have control and you can go places, right? And when you have a good sharp knife, the benefit is you, you're never going to be out of control. And that's why I can do this. Once again, I'll just, I'll do it one more time as close to the camera as I can, is I wrote, and I want to make a point, I'm moving the fruit as much as I'm moving the knife. Yes, the knife will touch my thumb. I will cut the, the apple here and I'm gonna rotate the apple around. Notice the knife moves, but not the whole way. Do you guys see that? So as I pull, the knife is moving, but not as much as the fruit is moving, okay? And so I'm just gonna pull through here. And again, because it's, it's uh, nice and sharp and easy to control, I can easily do this. Does everyone see that? Okay, and I'll finish up with the apple here. Uh, and ma I'm making you guys a fruit salad. You're learning how to have a romantic date right here, just so you know. Okay, so, you know, get more than cut code advice here. Okay, so you're welcome. All right. All right, so there's the apple. Um, just to get out of order real, right away, I'm just going to peel the mango here. Okay, I'm going to peel the mango. All right, so I'm just going to go around the mango. Super easy. Okay. All right, so... Is this the best one? <laughs> so frustrating. It's all good. Okay. Oh my gosh. I hate when that happens. Okay. Oh, we missed it. Oh well. Okay. So uh, do we have the one in the baggie or no? Probably. Wanna go check? It might be better just when we eat it. Okay. So the peeler. So in a in a potato or an apple. So a side note would be the peeler here, right? Um with the peeler, you go around a potato, you go around an apple. If you peel the apple, you go around a mango, right? You guys check that. 
But what do you do with the carrot? Right, a carrot or a celery, you go down. Now, in the video, the lady's like, oh, he's going to with the New York accent. You never would really try to do that, but it's great because if you're lefty or righty or going down an apple or around a potato, down a cucumber or whatever, you can easily peel with the peeler. Another thing that's really cool about the peeler is that you have a little shovel, a little shovel here that you can dig the eye out of a potato. So as I do this with the mango, just for kicks, it's kind of annoying with the mango, but you can dig out the little eye of the potato with that little shovel. Catch that? All right, so now with the, with the mango, I'm just gonna take this, okay? And I'm just gonna peel, you bring it closer probably. Okay, and I'm just gonna peel this and uh, just get my pieces of mango until I get to that nut or the seed or whatever they call it. See, I just got to it right there on that angle. Okay, and now I'm just gonna keep peeling the, the mango right here. And I can very easily, and again, it's not hard because the, the blade itself works and you have control when you're cutting. And so it's not dangerous. You're not gonna cut into your uh, fingers, right? When you're, when you're cutting. Okay. So I'll leave that for later. We'll do more of that. Okay. So that's all with the mango. I did strawberries, apples, and mangoes. Okay. And now let's go ahead and do oranges. You guys did, you guys cut tomatoes a minute ago. And in the trimmer video, it's all tomatoes. They don't do anything else. Right. In the long video, they do show some of the uses of the trimmer. One of them is the orange slices in the video. They do it wrong. So what they do in the video is they have you cut it like this and it's kind of annoying and whatever, dangerous in my opinion. Okay, so I just like to do this. I'll go on a 45 degree angle. So watch, I'll go down the middle and then in a 45 degree angle and then I'll flip it around because I'm right-handed and I'll do that 45 degree angle. And now I'm making the orange slices for the soccer team. So you're learning how to be the best soccer mom on the planet right here. Okay, is that awesome? Okay, so soccer mom, soccer, soccer dad, okay. Um, and what am I going to do? 45 degree angle and then turn it around and do a 45 degree angle again right here. I hope Shay and Devin are taking mental note of all this. OK, so right there. So when you do it right. So good. There we go. So now watch this. This is fun. So now I just made the orange slices for the soccer team. Right. But watch this for the fruit salad. We don't want to eat the peel. So watch. I'm going to go halfway through. I'm putting the tip of the trimmer right there and I'm literally just going to pull. What direction? What direction is the, does the double D edge cut? Forward, backward, and straight down. So when I pull through this, what am I doing? I'm getting, I'm literally getting the double D edge of all three directions going what? Forward, backward, and then I can just pull like that and it comes right off. Isn't that kind of cool? So you can just do this all day, okay? Um, do it for a hobby, okay? Make a YouTube out of it, make a TikTok. Okay, just kidding. All right, so pretty amazing. So I just grab it and pull it right off and I'm making these orange slices for the fruit salad. Okay. So just take that slide off and uh, there we go. Okay. So we'll do more of this in a minute, but we're making fruit salad. Um, trimmer, trimmer, trimmer. We'll make sure this happens too. Okay. Um, please. Okay. So that's the trimmer. Um, tr trimmer is the number one knife sold since 1949. That's worth a note. Number one knife sold since 1949. Okay, it's got that double D edge. If you look really closely on the video, you can even see that they're not round serrations. This knife's pretty abused too. Okay, um, but you can see there's three distinct blades forward, backward, and straight down in that trimmer edge. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. When you cut the tomato, you can read the, the Cutco logo right there. Is it, can you see it? Is that the side? No, wrong side. No, right there. Yeah, you can see the Cutco logo. And uh, when you cut the tomato, you can cut it so thin that you can still read the Cutco uh, uh, logo. Uh, so we do, the tomatoes are over there, so we won't do it right now, okay? So, but there you go. Next I'm gonna show you is the third piece of the spatula. Oh, one more thing. Trimmer, there's actually two trimmers. In my kitchen, we have like four trimmers, by the way. And um, we also have the Santoku trimmer. Why don't you grab it, could you? Okay, um, go around, yeah, go between the tables. Yeah, that's, yeah, because the cords. Okay, so the trimmer, um, because it's so popular, a lot of people have extras, and the trimmer is awesome. The Santoku trimmer, it's just a style difference. We have a Santoku paring knife, and we have a Santoku trimmer, and the difference between these two, and again, all the sets come in either, well, most of the sets come with either red, with they, most sets can come in red, and then all sets come in pearl or classic. 
all sets come to Perler Classic. I just happen to have the homemaker in red. So that's why I'm going to focus on red because you'll know it's a homemaker piece pretty much. This is the Santoku trimmer. So the difference in these two knives, if you notice, is that the, the, the normal trimmer since 1949, it has the teeth and it goes out and then it comes up to a point. It comes up to a point. Whereas the Santoku trimmer is where it goes out and then down to a point. There's a style, mostly it's a style thing. In a minute, I'll show you how it's a functional thing. But for some people, a lot of customers, it's literally just a style thing. Okay, just so you know. All right, so there's the second piece of the set. We've got the paring knife and the trimmer. Third piece in your set is the what? Spatula spreader. This, like we said yesterday, is like the knife. I, I just used one today making bagels. I made a bagel, green cheese and everything. And uh, I like cinnamon raisin bagels, just so you know. Okay, all right. Um, what note is that? Anybody know? Uh, Anybody? B sharp. Because it's always going to be sharp. You get it? Yeah. See, you got to know these silly jokes. So write down spatula spider, B sharp. Um, just because if you, what, wouldn't it be sweet if you could win one of these in a contest? Wouldn't there be, that'd be pretty awesome. Would you be pretty excited to find out about the contest maybe? So the spatula spreader um, I won't lie. It is one of the knives you can win in your, in your contest. Don't tell Jesse I told you that, okay? Um, but when you show it to someone and you say the B-sharp joke, they're like, B-sharp. Okay, so you got to make the silly jokes, okay? You could do C-sharp, C-sharp. Get it? Or if you're from Canada, A-sharp, A. Okay, so any of, that, any of those work, okay? Now, the spatula spreader is same sharpness. It's got the same double D edge. Right, same double D edge. Okay, so it's just as sharp, and uh, so you. This is great for grilled cheese. It's actually not in the manual, but the grilled cheese because you can spread the butter, flip the sandwich, cut the sandwich, all with the same tool. Okay, you guys did the leather out front, and that leather sweet. So you could do the leather with any knife with the double D edge. It'll go through with the spatula spreader. It'll go through even though, even though it doesn't look like major sharp or anything. This thing's freaking sharp. So here's the avocado. I'm just going to show you the avocado deal, and I'm just going to go around. And, and cut that right there, twist it off, right? I didn't do that very well, but, oh, well, okay, whatever. Okay, so I'm annoyed. Okay, so now um, this is not super unripe, but it's it's decent. I'll use the back of the spatula spreader, the back of the spatula spreader to separate the flesh from the skin, okay? So I'm just coming, see that I'm using the back of the spatula spreader, right? And it's still sharp enough. Sometimes it'll still cut the, shit, the skin, but, um, and all I'm doing is I'm separating, like I said, the flesh of the avocado from the skin. And once I get that done, ready, right there. Okay, now all I'll do is do that with the back of the blade. And I've got $12 of avocado for Chipotle. Okay, right there. Okay, yeah, which is worth it. But at the same time, it's a lot. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, but you got to have your avocado, guys. All right, so look at that. I can make my deli slices or whatever slices of avocado. And I barely even need a cutting board, right? Isn't that cool? So we'll leave that for right now. Okay. So spatula spreader, again, so important to use. Um, and that's just the sandwich making machine. It's awesome. Icing cake, bagels, cream cheese, uh, spreading icing on any cupcakes or any of that stuff like that. Uh, anytime you spread something and cut something, it's one tool for all the jobs. Next is the petite carver, okay? So the petite carver... Uh, oh, I'll just do that. Okay. So for the petite carver, um, it's the jobs that are too big for the trimmer, too small for the carver, right? And it's a mid-size utility knife, but it's also great for like a good turkey breast. Ever get the tri-tip from Costco, that tri-tip, and you put in the barbecue and everything, and it's super nice and tender and tasty. So this knife's good to cut like a boneless little meatloaf or a little chicken breast or a little tri-tip or something like that. But it's also amazing for watermelons and, or for uh, pineapple and stuff like that. So got this guy. Let me just go like this on the, on the pineapple. And then I'll cut straight down right through the core, right through the center. Okay. And you know how pineapple is hard, soft, hard, right? And so it's kind of annoying to cut. But when you have cut kill, it don't matter. Homie, don't play that, right? Honey badger don't care, whatever. Okay, so got that, got the core. Now watch me, I'm going to fillet this. This is a small pineapple. Even costco size pineapples, bless you. Even costco size pineapples will go right through there. So I'm going to fillet this so I have a loose piece of pineapple. And then I'm just going to go down, down, down with that round tip of the blade. Go down again, and then bam, fruit salad, baby. Okay, so 
right here, go down the core, and then I'm just gonna fillet this side, and then I'll come over here and I wash my ring finger shape, right? Okay, when I'm doing that, because that's the one that I, what? Okay, I'm just saying that that one hangs down when I'm filleting, so you have to watch it. Okay, so watch all your fingers, that's a good idea. Okay, so, um, but you see how I can do that? And again, this is the fourth tool in the set, the petite carver, and then I can just do that, right? Boom, okay? And then bam, 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 bam. Okay, and I'll go right down the middle and go, okay. So next thing I'll do for time's sake is uh, I'm gonna take out the turning fork, tuning, what is it? Turning fork, right? It's chest testing you. So you got the turning fork right here with three tines. Watch me grab this, just like in the video, they grab the, pine, the pickles three pickles, see I can grab onto this core of the pineapple and it doesn't even come off. Because when I pushed into it, the tines flare a little bit. And so that's what grips onto the pickles. The hardest thing is grandma's peaches and pears when she like jars them and you know cans them or whatever. And that's really hard to get off, right? It's off the fork or hard to get on the fork and then they fall off. Well, with the, with the turning fork, unless you push too hard, okay? Um, so I can just push in and I can just flip stuff on the barbecue, flip stuff on the in the frying pan. I can get stuff out of the maraschino cherries out of the jar, you know, or whatever. So that's the uh, turning fork, right? So this is like a kitchen tool worth writing down the kitchen. It's more of a cooking tool or a serving tool or a kitchen tool, right? It's not really a fork that you can really carve anything with because you can't get deep enough into anything to hold it, to carve it. And you can't get around bones. And so this is not a carving fork at all. It's like a cooking tool, kitchen tool, um, you know, that type of thing versus the carving set. So I'm going to pause and just mention, uh, again, this is a utility knife, the Petit Carver. It's a larger utility knife. People use utility knives so often that they need to, okay? Whereas when grandpa, and it's, it's the holidays, and it's time to, this is why we call this the spare tire. The carving set has a fork that's deep enough to grab on and hold down inside a roast, inside a turkey and around bones and things like that. It's a holder downer. So the two forks together, you got a holder downer and you got a picker upper. That's the thing you got to think about. The turning forks, a picker upper, carving knife, carving fork is a holder downer. So I went out of order here, didn't I, right? But just to just differentiate the two. Now the two could be used together as a handlebars. So you can like lift up a big roast, lift up a, a chicken or turkey out of the serve cooking dish putting it into the serving dish, moving it around, put the kids to bed, whatever you got to do, right? With the, some of you guys have brothers and sisters. Okay, let's just check it. Okay, so that's really, I'm not going to show you how to carve a roast because I don't have a roast, okay, to carve. Okay, but I think everyone gets the idea. The last thing I'll say about the carving set, it's so cool when you hand this to Uncle Bob, Grandpa, Dad, whoever, and they're just like, they feel like they're the king of the castle. Like, I've got my carving knife, carving fork. And how many of you have moms and dads that have like, six carving sets none of them work but they're all from grandpa grandma grandpa grandma and they're like old and they're silver and they might look great and they're cool to bring out but they're not functional the cool thing about the cutco carving set is that it's functional and so you know you can pull it out for every big sunday night meal or, or holiday meal and that's why we we want to have a carving set that's why it's in the homemaker set right okay so the We've done the first five pieces and then I did the last two pieces, right? So we have three more major pieces of the homemaker. And the next one is the butcher knife, okay? And the butcher knife is the raw meat knife. And the butcher knife is the one that looks a little scary if you're watching too many movies and stuff like that. This knife is actually the safest knife in the set because it's the knife that you use to protect the other knives. It's the safest knife in the set because you use it to protect the other knives. And so it's made for the like, disjointing chicken. Cutco pays for itself. That's a great line, by the way. Great, important thing to say and understand. Have you ever bought chicken breasts or, or chicken parts, chicken legs, whatever? They're like three times the price to buy chicken parts versus just buy a whole chicken. If you buy a whole chicken, it's literally, I bought a whole chicken. It was like seven, eight bucks sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean uh, and so without, not the Costco already cooked chicken but like a whole raw chicken is like seven ten bucks you know sometimes depending on the size and you can take a whole chicken apart in like seven or eight cuts and you save a ton of money and you get more chicken when you buy a whole chicken right and it's also great for uh disjointing ribs like frozen ribs and stuff like that just to show you this i'm gonna take these put this pineapple rind here pretend these are ribs whether they're frozen or not and watch me use the round part of the blade 
and I'll just rock right through that. So if you have somebody that like, smokes meats, who's got a grandpa or dad or somebody that's got like a Traeger smoke, you know, and stuff like that, they smoke the meats. And so really simple, you can take and, and uh, you know, cut the pineapple like their ribs, okay? So, and I'm just doing that, you know, for, and that's why if you were to <clears throat> win one of these or something like that, I don't, you know, um, you could show that, for example, to a customer without like getting out ribs. Okay, also the back of the blade, the back of the blade is a meat tenderizer. So if you make carne asada or make fajita meat, like fajitas, you can take that and you can take the back of the blade and just pulverize the meat. And that makes it really good to uh, absorb when you marinate it, right? And then you can, you know, marinate the meat and then you put it in the fryer, you know, frying pan or whatever you do to, to cook it, barbecue it. And then you got this delicious tender meat that you can put in your fajitas, put in your carne asada. Doritos or whatever. Okay. And so that's the butcher knife. Again, frozen meat, disjoint chickens. You can pry apart like frozen hamburger patties and stuff like that. If you buy the big stack of hamburger patties from Costco and stuff like that. So that's the butcher knife. Then we have the chef's knife. And okay? now the chef's knife, this guy is so important. There's actually five different chopping knives. That's worth a note. There's five different chopping knives. So this is the petite chef. And we have a longer French chef blade, about an inch and a quarter or longer. Don't worry about every detail here. Just know that there's five chopping knives. Um, there's a vegetable knife that's shaped kind of like a cleaver. And then there's also two Santoku knives. So here we have one of the Santoku um, choppers. So um, the difference is, again, same thing. The blade on the normal cut kill goes out and then it curves up to a point. Whereas a lot of our competitors have blades that are shaped like this, mostly for style, not for purpose, but there is a purpose I'll show you. But where again, the blade, top of the blade goes out and then bends down to a curve, curves down there like that to a point. And so that's the difference between the, the st classic style, normal style, and then the Santoku style. There's six different knives that can be con that, that can be purchased Santoku style or not. So there's even one set called the signature set where customers pay like 25 bucks more and they get the Santoku version of the same knife if they want to. There's one set that does that, the signature set. Okay, I'll get back to the Santoku in just a second, but I'm going to show you the chopping knife. And have you ever seen the chefs on TV? They're like, chop, 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 chopping things. And it's like super fast. And you wonder how to do that. A couple things I'll mention. It's not hard. It's really easy. And it's just a technique. It's not about, you know, skill necessary. It's just a little bit of a safety technique kind of almost. So the deal is you use the back of the blade. You guys know those paper cutters at school that go, you know, cut the paper. You pretend this is one of those, like there's an, almost an axle or like it's attached. Pretend it's attached to the blade, to the cutting board at the tip. And you just keep lifting. And, and then what you do to make sure you're not chopping off body parts, fingertips and stuff like that, check this out. I'll rotate my knuckles under and my top knuckle will rub the top of the blade. This is what keeps all my fingertips intact without cutting myself. So as I do this, I can go a super fast million miles an hour and I just make sure my top finger, my top knuckle is hitting the top of the uh, top of the blade. And so I'm not going to be dangerous. If the if it gets too thick, it's really simple. I'll just cut that thing in half and then I'll just do the same thing and I'll just be chopping through. And notice how you use the back of the blade. If you ever hear mom do this and you hear that noise, she doesn't know what she's doing. Okay, so, but how many knife using cooking classes did your mom take before she got married? Probably not a lot, right? And even if she took that one class in high school, they don't really teach you all the time how to use all the knives. I know I took home ec in high school and I never learned once how to use them, how to use knives. We used them, but we didn't learn how to use them, right? And so even people that have like learned how to cook sometimes don't even know how to use knives properly. And that means, of course, 18 to 25 year old college kids that are working with Cutco, they don't necessarily know how to use those knives. So that's why it's important that you learn these things. And even watching the video and the demo, it actually teaches you a little bit how to use the knives. So again, the back of the blade, knuckles touching, top knuckles so that your bottom fingertips aren't underneath, right? And then you can boil these carrots for three minutes and then you put your ramen in for three more minutes and now you got gourmet ramen because that's what you do when you're in college, right? Okay, and then stick your egg in there and you get your egg drop, you know, gourmet ramen. Don't just eat ramen, eat gourmet ramen, okay? So don't eat ramen, it's bad for you. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So that's the chopping knife. Again, it's the right hand of any good chef. I really wanna emphasize, this is like a knife that everybody uses when they actually cook all the time. That's why we have five of them and customers definitely wanna have, and that's why actually our, our signature set has 
uh, two chopping knives. So this is the chef's knife. Mm -hmm. okay. Chef's knife. No, great question. Okay. The petite, no, this is the petite you, chef's uh, knife. And then the last right knife there. I'll show you of the homemaker set is the bread knife, the slicer. No. It's the longest okay, double the edge in the set. Longest double the edge in the set. Devin, you want to help me out there? Okay. So something kind of bread. Okay. Gracias. So Phil, can that. you hear me? So you guys want to kind of speed over here. Ladies, come on over here. Okay. So I'm just not even gonna push. I'm just gonna let her just like let the let the weight of the knife cut that open, right? Really easy. And then I have like three rivets. I'm just gonna hold the back rivet. And I want you to notice how easy it is to cut right through that bread. You don't even need to push down. So if it's a hard crust, you push through the crust, but then it goes right through and it won't mush the bread inside there and stuff. And so that slicer is amazing. Okay. Double the edge, super duper, 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 duper sharp, right? Like there. And again, good for boneless meats, a larger, like a larger ham or something like that versus that smaller petite carver. This is the largest double the edge. This is long enough to cut through a whole cake. So if you ever cut cake and you like, cut through a whole nine inch round cake and do whatever to it and you know cut it down i like to cut them in the middle and then put jelly in the middle of the cake and then put the top of the cake back on there so you have a whole another layer of you know cake with jelly or icing in there so super awesome the double the edge knife there okay so that again the slicer okay now the next couple pieces i'm going to show you are pieces that are in the signature set which is the set just larger than the homemaker okay you guys see that right there it's just larger than the homemaker it has 10 table knives versus eight and the signature and the homemaker i'm sorry signature and the ultimate set are the sets that are tall enough that can fit steak knives versus the table knives remember in the end of the demo yesterday there's either steak or table knives the table knives are just as functional you guys cut the leather today with the table knife and it's right through the leather it's sick right um, the steak knives are literally for aesthetic purposes. They still cut the steak just the same as the table knives, but people dig on the steak knives. And so the signature set and the ultimate set are the two sets larger than the homemaker where the block is tall enough to be able to be deep enough to hold the longer blade of the steak knife. So that's why the homemaker and all the sets below the homemaker don't have the steak knife capability, okay? So I'm gonna show you three additional pieces, actually four, that are in the signature and the ultimate but in particular i'll talk about the signature set right now okay so the first of those three pieces are the uh one is that santoku chopping knife this is my wife's my mom's and my stepmom's favorite tool that cutco makes this was by the way we don't sell pink cutco i'm just showing it because we did it for breast cancer a few years ago we did a little fundraiser we thought we'd sell a little bit of this stuff and then we'd wind up kicking in the end a do donation. We sold so much pink Cutco that we over exceeded the donation we were going to do because people just kept buying the pink Cutco. They thought it was really cool. So every once in a while we have some purple, some pink, and they've done that. Actually, right now we have red, white, and blue table knives. We have red a set of six. We have a set of six table knives where they can buy two red, two white, and two blue. So it's kind of fun, you know, around the 4th of July, people loved it. Um, so we still sell them. I just sold some this week, actually. Right? So um, anyway, moving right along. Here's that Santoku. Uh, San, it's the Petite Santoku is what it's called. But it's another chopping knife. And it'd be the same thing as the carrots that I just did or any type of chopping, dicing. What are the six S's? Do you remember these? It's okay if you don't. Salads, stew, stir fry. Salsa, uh, salad soup, stew, stir fry, stuffing, and stuffing, and the other one I just salsa, stir fry. Uh, yeah, I can't. I set them in the wrong order, so now I'm all backwards. Okay, so there you go. There's the there's that petite santoku. Oh, the function. I do need to show you the function. And so I'll do this with. Um, I'm gonna do it with. Oh, I don't even have more apple, do I? I forgot to do save a piece of apple. Okay, I will do it. No, I'll do it with like a strawberries, just as fine. Okay, so the difference is if you ever cut, for example, um, cucumber or carrots and you do the lengthwise cutting. So if you ever heard of julienne carrots, you can chop down on it. I will use it, okay? So you can go like that. But also when you do a long slice, I can do this because the Santoku style that the knife has makes it easy where I'm not dulling the blade. Do you see that? Because the tip comes down like that. If I tried to do that with the chef's knife, watch this. I'd, I'd look like a murderer. 
and I would feel like I'm about to slice my body part. You know what I mean? Like that's just a little scary. Or if I do it this way, I'm going to be dragging the entire blade and I'm going to dull the entire blade on the cutting board. So that's why the chef's knife is great because we've had it for 75 years, right? 74 years. But notice how um, when I do the Santoku style, I'm not dulling the whole blade. Does everyone see that? So I can do that with the petite Santoku or the Santoku style chopping knife. Okay, so again, the extra piece that I just covered was that petite Santoku. And it's awesome um, because it's an extra chopping knife. So sometimes you'll need two chopping knives in the same set and the same thing because you might be making some meat that you want to cube like a stew meat and then also cut up the carrots and the potatoes in your, in your soups and stews. Oh, stews. Um, so that's the one I forgot. And so you'll use two chopping knives sometimes for raw meat and for chopping vegetables and stuff like that. Really quickly, the next um, piece that's in the signature set that's not in the homemaker is called the party slicer. Now, what this basically is, it's the trimmer. Remember the trimmer, the number one knife sold since 1949? It's the trimmer on steroids. So if you want to jot that down, the hardy slicer, it's super thick. The blade is super thick. You see that, right? And it's about the same blade, a little longer, about half an inch longer. And it's super heavy duty. So it's like the trimmer on steroids. My favorite use for this guy is that frozen log of breakfast sausage. You guys know what I'm talking about, the Jimmy Dean frozen sausage. And this is not frozen. This is summer sausage for like cheese and crackers, right? So you guys can eat that. I'm not gonna bring raw sausage for you guys to eat in training here, okay? But I'll take a frozen log of that sausage and I'll literally just go just like that through with one push. It'll cut right through the whole frozen log. And then I'll just pop the, the, the plastic wrap, rip it off and throw it right in the frying pan uh, and make up sausage, you know, sausage patties on Sunday before for church. It's awesome. Okay. So you guys will get a chance to use this hearty slicer, cut up some sausage and, uh, and make yourself a sausage and cheese and bread, you know, sandwich. So speaking of cheese, right, we're going to get to our holy knife, the Sunday knife, right? Remember that from yesterday? Um, so I'll just go right through. I can push straight down. The most flavorful time to eat cheese is when it's at room temperature. The worst time to cut cheese <laughs> is when it's at room temperature, right? And this is at room temperature. And so, but notice that I can literally just push straight down and it won't hurt, it's easy. In fact, this is really soft cheese, okay? But um, it'll just go right through there and it doesn't stick to the blade very hard, you know? Obviously it sticks a little bit. And one of the things I'll mention about the uh, cheese knife, core of pineapple. Is there a pineapple core somewhere? Okay, do that, I'll do it. You do it, right? Careful, careful. All right. Um, all right. So check this out. Uh, who's ever heard of charcuterie? You guys know when you make the cheese and crackers and the really thinly sliced pears and, and stuff like that. I'll do it with the core of the pineapple. But notice, I'll just take, and there's part of the blade. So this is great for making homemade potato chips or homemade au gratin potatoes and stuff like that, because the front of this blade is actually a spreader and it doesn't, it's not, it's not sharp. So I can draw across the cutting board without dulling the knife and I can make my charcuterie and uh, make those really super thin slices of apple or pear or anything like that when I make that uh, dish or make that appetizer. Um, so it's amazing, okay? Um, again, not just for cheese, it's for anything that's like squishy, sugary, starchy, pears, apples. Some people use the cheese knife and the hearty slicer almost as a second or third trimmer. Like they use it in place of it, they need another trimmer and they'll just have an extra cheese knife or a hearty slicer, super, uh, does the job. So to recap, remember, we've got the, the extra pieces that are in the signature set. We have the Santoku, smaller petite Santoku, the hearty slicer, which has that double D edge, and then the cheese knife right here. And again, cheese knives are so popular. Also, if you want to jot it down, there's four different cheese knives. Some of them are smaller for a little bit nicer for like little trays, cheese trays that like mom serves, you know, when you have a party. And then we've got our super shears. So the original super shears from 1949, they're super rusty. These things are, you know, really amazing. And I say that because even if someone has these old things, I purposely have not had them replaced because I want to show them, right? And if I grab a, a penny, um, so check this out. These are right-handed only. They're only made for right-handed and they still have the teeth to grip, but I can take these 50 year old scissors and I can cut this penny like no big deal, right? Isn't that awesome? And they're freaking older than most of your parents, right? 
All right. And that's pretty cool. Right. But then if I were to send these in, the company would be like, we're just going to give them new ones. And the new ones have better steel that won't rust like that in the dishwasher, won't have all that problem. They're made for left-handed people also. Okay. I'm not lefty, but I can cut a penny lefty. So I'll even do this lefty and I'll just go right around the penny here. Super simple. And again, I'm not lefty, so it's even hard for me. Right. But look at that. I got two sides penny, right. You can make like penny art. It's all fun. Okay, there's a whole class we'll teach you. I'm just kidding. Okay, but uh, they come apart for easy cleaning, right? You can throw them in the dishwasher. And these are great. The things you want to write down about the scissors is anything for the garage, the garden, and the kitchen. The garage, the garden, and the kitchen. I can't really think of much else you could do with scissors, right? But those are three specific uses for sure that everybody loves the Super Shears for. And again, they're way more comfortable with this thermoresin handle versus all metal right-handed only. Okay, so these aren't made for lefties because they're actually angled this way for right-handed, but these can be done lefty or righty. Okay, so lefties hate life a lot of times because knives and scissors are super annoying. Are you lefty? Right, super annoying, right? Uh, golf clubs, there's a whole bunch of things that lefties get mad about, right? And, uh, and so, um, but with Cutco, the scissors and because of the double D edge, it's amazing, okay? Uh, how, how much uh, research development, the universal wedge like handle, the double D edge, both make it cutting, if you're lefty, super easy, okay? All right, so that's, oh, I, I totally got, okay, I got to do this real quick with the, uh, with the melons, dude, speak up. Okay, sorry. Okay, so who's, who's, who's doing this? I forgot, okay. All right, I'm going to do the melons and then we'll wrap, okay? So, sorry, Jesse, I'll be done in a minute. Okay, so let me show you this. Somehow I got out of order. So, Check it out, the Petite Carver, and I'll take that. So Shay, you should be getting this uh, Petite Carver. Okay, this is the Petite, I'm back to that fourth piece in the set. This is the rope knife also. So if you do cut rope with a customer when you win one of these <clears throat> in a contest, right? You can, uh, you can uh, cut rope with customers. And so notice there's a couple ways to get rid of the seeds. I'm just gonna show you this one. All I'll do is I'll take this, and it cuts forward, back, and straight down. So I can just go right through that and I get rid of the seeds super simple, okay? So I'll just fillet, cut off that seed piece, right? And now check this out. What I'll do is I'll go grab the bowl, okay? And I'll take the round part and I'll just go like that and I'll fillet, right, like that, okay? Whoop. Who is your daddy? Cut coat, cut coat. All right, so, all right. If you're not laughing at that, then... I don't know what to say. Okay. So, all right, we got it. Boom. Okay. So that's an easy way to cut that, um, cut that pineapple or cantaloupe. And then for kicks, I'm going to grab that butcher knife. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to take this watermelon and I'll just go right through there. You feel like Moses. It literally splits in half. It's so awesome. Okay. And then I'll just go like that. Got that. All right. And then I'll move this out of the way. This is a small enough watermelon. I'll usually do half. I'll cut it in half like that, and then I'll flip it around and cut this way, okay? Now what I'll do, just to make the fruit salad nice, twist that, um, is check this out. I'll take my watermelon, I'm gonna go down like this, and then I'm just gonna make a smiley face like that, and I'll make another smiley face, watch my finger, and go like that. Super easy making a watermelon. We're making this fruit salad, boom. And boom, super easy, okay? And one more for kicks, okay? And I'll go like that. All right, simple, nice. All right, cool? Uh, and the ice cream scoop, another thing you can do with the ice cream scoop is take that cantaloupe and just pull right through here and scoop out. This is great for watermelons or for uh, cantaloupes, honeydews, and also for squash. And pumpkins, when you carve your own pumpkins, uh, I wonder if we would have taken this sand hollow, Jesse, and done this underwater. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, too bad. Oh, well, we're both doing something instead. Okay, there's a pumpkin carving, underwater pumpkin there's carving. There's a scuba diving, Jesse, underwater pumpkin entered. carving um, contest. That's so, going on. Yeah, it's just another level of, yeah, so much cooler. All right. Okay, cool so there is, the um, the again, lake. additional, some potpourri notes on the different pieces of the homemaker. Let me ask you one question, everybody here on Zoom and everything. Was there anything I just showed you that you were like, oh, I've never seen that and done with knives or I've never seen my mom cut any of this food before? Or were all of you like, 
No, my mom's done all of this type of food before. And the point I'm making is that there, the, what I've shown you was the basic uses of the basic pieces in the basic set, the homemaker set. And I showed you a few more pieces, but even those other pieces, those were uses that your mom, my mom, everyone's mom does. And that's why I want to make a point. Is that's why we call the homemaker set the basic set for all the tools to do the, all the jobs in the kitchen as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And then there's a couple sets that are larger. And then there's a bunch of sets that are smaller for people that if they don't get the homemaker set, that's okay too. Do we have a lot of options for your customers uh, tomorrow when they don't get a homemaker set? Totally. But does everyone understand the basic set, the homemaker set, and why every tool is important? And if you go through the presentation by reading the manual, watching the 11 minute video, and then each of those little videos and talking about each of those knives, the whole time your customer's going, yep, yep, I do that, I do that, I do that. Doesn't it make sense to buy a set of Cutco, right? And that's what they're thinking the whole presentation, just so you know. All right, so now we're going to really quickly run over here to our seats. Jesse's going to pick up uh, on some stuff now. So I'm going to switch our audio. Switching to audio, Jesse. You can 